Hi, this is Rick Tharp of RX Kinetics, here to give an overview of the antibiotic kinetics for Android program. I have the emulator running on my desktop. Let's start it up. First thing you'll see is the disclaimer screen. Please read through it and accept it if you accept all that information there. Uh, the patient data screen, very simple but I will go through each of these inputs, age, whether that age is in years, months, or days, height, whether that height's in centimeters or inches, weight, whether that's in kilograms or pounds, serum creatinine, whether that's in milligrams, per deciliter or international units, gender, male or female, select your drug model, why are there two vancomycin models? I'll explain that in a minute. First let me go through some of the buttons here. Clear will erase all this information you just entered. Calc will give you a pop-up with uh, some of the parameters that are calculated on this screen. For example, creatinine clearance, what method was used, the body surface area, BMI, and lean body weight. View model takes you to the uh, calculated model. We'll talk about this more in a minute. CRCL button will take you to a screen that allows you to choose an alternate creatinine clearance method. For example, if you prefer to use lean body weight for your creatinine clearance, you would click there, select that, then click copy to take you to the model parameter screen, or you would click cancel to take you back. Also from this screen is where you could, uh, let's say you have a creatinine clearance, measured creatinine clearance from your lab, you could type that in there and go on. Let's go back to the patient screen and talk about some functions that are available in the menu. So you would tap menu on your Android device to bring up these four things. The first one is an about box, which is just a little information about the program, what version it is, and my email address. So if you have any questions or any suggestions, just email me, please. I wrote this program to help my fellow pharmacists. I like hearing from you. You know, if you put some anonymous comment on the Android market, that doesn't help anybody. I can't get in contact with you to help you with your problem. So email me, please. I answer all email. Uh, another function here, we have the help screen, help window, and that it explains every aspect of the program, how every screen on the program, what the, what each of the buttons are, what they do. There's also um, all of the equations used in the program are written out here for you, and they are all referenced here. FAQ second, and the very first question is, what is the difference between the vancomycin and CL model? A little explanation here with a link to a page on my website with more information. And I'm not going to read that to you this time. Uh, another function here from the menu is the model editor. And this is one of the most powerful functions of this program, this deceptively simple yet powerful program. All of the parameters that are used to calculate the PK model are right here on this screen. When you can edit those to, to better fit your practice. Uh, let's just go through some of those, some of the fields here. We have a model name, and the model name must be unique for each model, and I'll, and I'll explain in a minute why that's important. You know, whether the model calculates a, a, an, an elimination rate or a clearance, uh, what parameters used to to calculate that. We have our non-renal, which is the y-intercept, and renal, which is the 
uh, slope. So let's multiply it times creatinine clearance. The volume of distribution in liters per kilo and whether that's a correction factor for obesity. In this case, it's 40%. We have a target peak and target trough. What time that peak, target peak is predicted? In this case, it's zero. For vancomycin, it's 60. EI dose is extended interval, pulse dosing, Hartford nomogram, once a day dosing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, pediatric and neonatal dose, pediatric and neonatal interval, and the standard infusion time. For example, if you give your amino glycosides over 30 minutes instead of 60, then you need to change that here in the model. I've also included some, some drugs, some beta-lactams, drugs that are not traditionally dosed with PK methods. To, to, just to give you an illustration of how versatile this program is and what you what other things you can do with it besides the you know just the standard old amino glycoside and vancomycin which you've done forever you notice on here the level analysis box is not checked that means that we're, we we draw levels and we can analyze levels on drugs like astreanam and ceftazidime of course we don't do the levels so we would leave that box unchecked or for any other drug that you would happen to uh, wish to add to your database and if you want to add a, a drug model just click the plus button which adds it clears this all out and you can type all this information in yourself or let's uh, let's do another example let's say um, you have a burn unit and you have a, a model for genomycin for those patients you can click on the menu and click copy model uh, and then you can uh, let's say you're you have a, the, your burn patients, you use a higher volume distribution, liters per kilo, and then you would give it a unique name. And you'll notice here on my, on this emulator, it doesn't, doesn't give you a real keyboard, it gives you... <laughs> so anyway, I can't type it in, but normally you would type in, uh, for example, you would, you would give it a unique name. In this case, it's for a burn patient, so you would call it gentamicin burn, and that way it will show up in your list of drug models, and you'll know what it's for, and it's for those particular patients. So it's just, I'm just showing you some examples of how versatile this program is and uh, how powerful this simple little functionality is. Let's go back here to the main screen and let's do some dosing. Uh, in this case, we've got this patient here who must be square because they're 165 centimeters, 165 pounds. Anyway, uh, we click on View Model. This gives you the calculated model parameters. Uh, again, you can tweak these if you want, but if you find yourself consistently changing these, then you probably need to go back to the model editor and, and change them so that they bring them up uh, the same every time. And, uh, whoops, I should have explained. Uh, these two buttons here, we have prospective or retrospective. Prospective is just uh, dosing based on the population model, whereas retrospective is uh, where you analyze serum levels. So let's do some, let's first start out and do the prospective dosing. Here's our dose selection screen. Uh, there's a button up here at the top called model, and that'll bring up uh, the model parameters that are calculated based on all the patient information, your default model parameters, whether you changed anything on the previous screen. Click, a little pop-up gives you your volume distribution, KAL, half-life, etc. cetera. Uh, in this case, this, the program is going to give you a, an ideal dose, and, and uh, of course you want to enter a practical dose. Uh, a loading dose is optional. Oh, uh, let's see what we got here. What was that half-life again? Eight hours, 8.2 hours. Well, you know, normally you dose vancomycin at, at the half-life. Mm, let's, let's do something crazy, like 900, which my infectious disease physician likes to use. Every eight hours, uh, we come up with a trough that is uh, in the, our target range of 15 to 20. We can click on milligrams per kilogram gram button here, and it's going to give you dose in mg per kilo per day and per dose, dosing weight, total weight. In this case, it's 12 milligrams per kilo per day, 36 milligrams per kilo per, sorry, 12 per dose, 36 per day. That's within the standard range, so we shouldn't have too much to worry about. With it. Um, we can click on the graph. The graph button is going to show you 
uh, expected serum levels, and the approach to steady state. This is the one screen that you can rotate. All the other screens in the program are fixed to portrait mode. This screen you can rotate to get a better view of the uh, graph. Let me see if I can do that here on the emulator. Okay. So that gives you a little better. Let me scoot it over a little bit. Gives you a little better um, view of the, the serum level graph. Let me scoot this back over now. Good luck. Whatever. Pretty close. Okay, click back to take us back to this screen. Uh, one more thing I want to show you here is a PKPD button, which is um, let's calculate some pharmacodynamic parameters. If you know the MIC, you can type that in, and it will calculate your parameters for vancomycin. A 24 hour UC over MIC is the parameter you use to evaluate whether pharmacodynamically this, this dose that you've chosen is uh, best for the patient. Okay, let's go back to the this screen and click retrospective where we're going to enter serum levels. First thing you want to do is the, the pick the method that methodology that you're going to use. Several to pick from. They're explained in the help file. Also on the website, there's some nice pictures to explain. Say, say, peak and trough is our traditional thing we use for uh, immunoglycosides, where we draw a trough, give the dose, then draw a peak. Single. Uh, single point is just uh, where you draw a single steady state point at any point within the, the interval, whether it's a peak or a trough or a random. Um, steady state two or three point is when you would, uh, yeah, just uh, take a, a, a series of levels after the dose. F same with the first dose, two or three point, but this is when you give give a dose to a, a, a naive patient who hasn't had the, the dose, this drug before and uh, draw two or three levels afterwards to analyze. That's a good thing to use when you have a patient you're not sure about. Possibly, you know, if you want to nail down the kinetics from the start, that's a good method to select. Uh, and finally, there's a non-steady state steady three-point where you do a, a trough bef before, give the dose, draw a peak, and then a mid mid-range um, level. Lots of options here. But with vancomycin, 90% of the time you're going to do a steady state single point. And let's just make up some data, see if it works for this patient. You know, when you just type in stuff off the top of your head, it's not always going to turn out the way you think it is. Well, let's say this patient got a gram Q12. Their level was a little low. Um, they drew it 10 hours after the end of the infusion. Now, with steady state single point, the only way that you're going to be able to analyze that is with Bayesian. And Bayesian is only available in the paid version of this program. Uh, when your information is correctly calculated, it's going to, it's going to pop up with a, a Bayesian informational dialog. And that's going to tell you, give you a clue as to how well your, this patient's data fits the population model and vice versa. Four loops, uh, VD is real close, so and so was the uh, elimination rate. So uh, in the actual Android version, that screen stays on there a lot longer than it is here in the emulator. So it's not very useful here. So a gram Q8 looks good. We can look at our model. Parameters that are calculated with the Bayesian methodology. Half-life is 6.5 hours. I don't know. That's a little extreme, but whatever. Again, when you pull stuff out of your head and type them in here, it's different than using actual patient information, which I should have done, but whatever. Uh, again, it's the same screen as before, but instead of basing it on the population model, we're basing it on our serum levels. And we can do all the same stuff we did before. Milligrams per kilo, model, PK on a graph, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go back and let's try, um, let's do uh, let's do a gent. And we're going to do, uh, <clears throat> let's do an extended interval dose. 
You'll notice, if you remember on vancomycin, all I had was this one button here. Now with genomycin, where we have an extended interval uh, choice, we can click that and it's going to give us our uh, once a day dose. And uh, it's going to give you some estimated peaks and troughs. And, uh, but let's go back and let's do a a retrospective where we've drawn a level and and when we select here we'll see where we have ex the extended interval option now available <clears throat> for genomycin and we can plug that in let's say this patient was getting 340 Q24 they had a level of oh, I don't know let's say two drawn uh, ooh, 10 hours afterwards let's see what that comes up with And ta-da, there's our consensus nomogram. Um, because our model, if you remember back when I was showing you the model editor, the dose for genomycin was 5 milligrams per kilo, which is the consensus nomogram. If you, had, if, your mo if you go into the model editor and change it to 7, then it's going to pull up the Hartford nomogram. Regardless, it's showing you the three breakpoints break here, three breakpoint lines, and then there's your your serum level that was measured to 10 hours after the infusion. So you have a visual representation of the nomogram, so you can do your dosing from there. Okay, I think I have covered all the highlights of how to use the program. And again, Please email me if you have any questions or any suggestions. I want to hear from you guys. Thank you very much.